course, kind of unique. It is going to be Jason's attempt to try and solve the problem. In an interesting way, let's get the two spirits to gather in one room, and then we can solve the problem of the ghosts forever being united. And then because he was part of the RAF, he flew, flew airplanes, he knows about parachutes, they'll both get on parachutes, and that way they will fulfill the curse by jumping from the fire escape. However, they're going to have parachutes to save them on the way down. The story, of course, ends with everything working out, and at the very end, ten minutes to midnight on Halloween. So in other words, in some ways, this is a Halloween story. It is, of course, a tragic story because you have the individual who jumps right from the fire escape because he, he thinks that maybe he's not loved. But in the end, it is a love story, isn't it, uh, about a guy and a girl. All right, let's jump quickly now to 2A and talk themes messages. Well, you, you could obviously you could write down several. Let's list at least a couple, of, a couple here. One, um, obviously, this idea that love even in death, is still a powerful, a powerful force. Even if it brings together the, the uh, two ghosts, right? They're still in love, which is, of course, a very ancient Greek idea as well. Notice Jason, another possible message. He's not too worried about death, is he? He's far more interested in making sure he gets the girl. That is to say, we'll, we'll solve this problem, we'll figure it out. A third possible message is, even... If it's challenging, lovers find ways to figure it out, against all odds, we might say. And of course, Greek mythology is replete with this kind of idea. At 2B, well, notice that we started with plot, so let's finish with plot, right? Of course, you have a very interesting idea. How about if I ask you this, though? What is, in your estimation, the central conflict of this text? The struggle. Watch this. Do you find this a conflict that is internal, character versus self? Do you find this a conflict of character versus character, external, character versus a force of nature, or character versus an idea? Different readers have understood this in different ways. For example, notice, Jason has to overcome his fear to go back into that building. Twice, character versus self. Some people like to be focused very much on character versus character. Jason. And, and, and his girl against the ghosts, figuring out, right? Some, some have seen this as character versus nature, the force of nature, that is to say these ghosts, which they're not actually physically there, are they, right? Okay. Then, of course, we have character versus the idea or society, the notion of love, and whether, in fact, one should believe in that idea or not. Of course, the falling action at the end of the story Everything works out. They jump from the fire escape with their parachutes and, in fact, even give each other a kiss on the way down. Notice how Aiken is able to then play with a very kind of heavy idea theme of suicide, and she can kind of play it off, right? Some of, the, some of my readers have sometimes wondered how they were going to get around the whole jumping from the fire escape thing and the whole thing about the curse that maybe comes. Okay. And of course, in Greek mythology, we have this all the time. This notion that a curse is coming, and then you get kind of worried and freaked out about the curse that's coming. Let's jump now to uh, level 3A. So what is for you a similar kind of text? What is your favorite scary story, we might say? What is your favorite ghost story? Do you have a favorite ghost story? Let me ask you this. What is your favorite story about love? That is to say, in the end, the lovers figure it out, even though they have to go through lots and lots of challenges to try and get there. I've mentioned already Ovid's classic Pyramus Thisbe as an example, right, of the tragedy and, of course, Romeo and Juliet. We'll come back when we study Romeo and Juliet to take a look at this story again from a different perspective. Finally, at 3B, what are your thoughts about love? And what are your thoughts about lo of love overcoming obstacles? Do you buy that notion at all? We'll ask later in other texts that we study, do you make a distinction between love and lust? Or are they fundamentally the same thing to you? And then how about this one? Jot this one down. Do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe in the idea that old buildings and old houses, of course, why is it that it's usually old stuff, is, can be haunted, right? So, for example, a group of students told me on a Monday once, over the weekend they had done something crazy, and one of the students was very serious when he said, I don't even want to talk about it. His buddies were teasing him, and they said, what happened? 
They drove collectively to an old abandoned house outside of town that everyone had always said was haunted because something terrible had happened there. And they walked into the building, the house, in the middle of the night. And the one flashlight they had went out. And the minute it went out, they swore they heard a sound. And then my student, who was freaked out, said, I swear I saw something, and I turned and I ran to get out of the house, and I will never go back again. He genuinely believed in ghosts. Do you believe in that kind of thing? Or do you go, yeah, whatever. By the way, a, 3B, a 3A observation. When we study together years later from now, Hamlet, Shakespeare's play, early on there is a ghost that appears. And the young Hamlet's pal, Horatio, says about ghosts, Psh, they don't exist. They don't buy that ghost garbage. And then all of a sudden, guess who shows up on stage? But a ghost totally freaks out Horatio because he had always lived his life assuming there was no such thing as ghosts. Where do you come down on that one? Well, there you go. An introduction to Sonata for Harp and Bicycle. It's a kind of strange title. Strange story, too. Thank you.